So the qalbu salim, the comfort is in salah. Comfort is in salah. And if salah is not there with me, then I have a problem. Then there is an issue. How many of you, show me hands. This one I need an answer. You do all the extra salah, not the obligatory only. Everyone. The two before Fajr, two or four before Zuhur, two or four after Zuhur, it depends which one you follow, two after Maghrib and two after Aisha. Every single day. Show me hands. We have a huge problem in Malaysia. And the answer is why? Why not? Not even the weekend? Not even when you're off? How long it will take you? Not even Fajr? The Fajr Sunnah? Show me hands. Less than 50%. The, the Sunnah that he never left, even when he was traveling. And sometimes he made it up. Why? It's two rukat. And what's the Sunnah reading in that Sunnah? And the first ruka you read what? Qul ya ayuhal kafiru. And the second ruka you read? Qul huwa Allahu ahad. How long it will take you? La, five minutes too long. Two, three minutes, five minutes, five minutes? From 24 hours? Five minutes. A sunnah that the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam did it every single day, whether a traveler, whether he is not a traveler, whether in Hajj, outside, expedition, doesn't matter. He never left it. Then how long can I get to the Qalbu Salim? I want everyone in this room, young and old. And I have to say I'm surprised. Because mashallah, tabarakallah, yani from what I have seen so far, this is a country Allah blessed with deen. Come and live where I live. And walk in the streets. And see you will be the only one. The only one looked like that. Or the only one looked like that. And when salah time comes in, who knows what salah. And when you are working, everybody around you, you're the only one who's going to struggle. Where is the qibla? And I have to carry my sajada with me. Why not? Why not? Two ruka'at. Two. Five minutes. Less than five minutes. It doesn't take two minutes. Salah. Your relationship. The gauge. This is how I say my to myself. The gauge. The thermometer. That will tell me. Where is Allah in my life? Is where is salah in my life? And I didn't say obligatory. Salah. Salah. In general. You know what is the name of salah? What is the origin of it? Who knows Arabi in this room? What is the origin of the word salah? From, no. I want it in Arabi. From? Sila. Connection. Connection. We say salatul raham. Kinship. Relation. Salah is from Sida. It's my connection. Look at it this way. This is my connection. It's my rope. How strong is my rope? I decide, not him. He told me the strongest rope is when you do one, two, three, four, five, six. The weakest rope is when you do the five. Most of the people in this room in here. Why? Why? How long we spend on social media? Where do you know me from? Right? I asked that. I keep asking, it, like, how do you know me? Do you follow me? Of course we do. Alhamdulillah. I, but why do I spend that much time on social media? And you're not seeing anything haram. Alhamdulillah. It's videos. It's education. Alhamdulillah. 
But I don't have five minutes to do Fajr uh, Nafila. What I'm going to tell him when I'm standing in front of him is what I ask myself. What will I say? I didn't have time. I didn't know. Your relationship with Allah is the salah. That's why it says the sign of the sound heart. This is number six. When he or she enters salah, they forget everything else. And it makes them feel so good. وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ And you feel good. Try it. I really ask you, all of you, when in the day something happens to you and you, and you don't feel good, you get upset, you get angry, and you feel a lot of, of, of uh, hatred, something happens, don't do anything. Don't do anything. It's an exercise. Try it. What are you going to lose? Go and do wudu. Come out and do two rukat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read the shortest things you know, whatever you know. And after you say, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum. Look in here and see how much what you felt before is left in that heart. I've tried it so many times. Salah is like, you know when you have headaches? What do you take in Malaysia when you have headaches? Tylenol? You call it Tylenol? And how do you feel? Most of the time, alhamdulillah. By Allah's grace, the Tylenol works. Right? Salah, wallahi, for my heart, and it should be for your heart, for all of us, is the Tylenol of the headache. Absolutely changes. There's something change in the heart after I say Allahu Akbar. So don't you tell me, people wants to talk about Qalbu Salim. I want to go to Allah like Sayyidina Ibrahim. I want my dua to be answered. I want to feel good. I want Jannah al Firdaus. I want to be next to Rasul Alayhi Salam. I want to see Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And you don't do the nafida of al Fajr. Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said this. Let me ask you the question. I'll tell you the hadith and we'll take the break. How many of you want a palace in Jannah? How you will get it? The person who does the, the extra nawafil that is the, the we say sunna mu'akkada, stressed upon. He did it all the time. That person who does it daily has a palace in Jannah. It's your choice. It's my choice. Two before Fajr. Two or four before Dhuhr. Two or four after Dhuhr. Nothing before or after Asr. Two after Maghrib. Two after Isha. It's. Don't leave. Tell yourself. Don't move. Before you do that sunnah. I saw it yesterday. Now I can understand it. Is in the masjid, we are in the masjid, we finished uh, Maghrib, and many of the ladies came to me. I was like, what happened to the sunnah? I didn't say it because I'm, I'm just, just arrived. Tell yourself, teach yourself this. How many of you, you have children young, five, six, seven, eight, and there is red lights, red lines in the house, right? You, this is red line. How many times? How many things you, you tell your child? This you will not do. This you will be in big trouble. How many of you? We all have, right? This is how you discipline yourself. You're going to tell yourself, these rukat of sunnah, non-negotiable. Period. Absolutely. How long you need to make it a habit? Between 30 to 40 days. That's how they teach you. That's it. That's it. Now you get attached to the, alhamdulillah, I didn't say the fard, I didn't say the obligation. I just didn't want to hear the answer. So I went right away to the extra. You do this, you do the extra, and now you're going to graduate, PhD. You're going to start doing the extra, extra. 
which is two or two after Dhuhr, two or four before Asr, two before Maghrib, and two before Isha, and Qiyamul Layl. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. You want to go to Jannah. You want to be in Jannah al-Firdaus. You want Qalbu Salim. And there is no Qiyamul Layl in your to-do list. Sharaful Mu'min. The honor of the believer. Even if it is two rakat only. Even if it's only the witter. You do it after Isha or you do it before you, uh, you do your Fajr. That's a choice. But the sign, the sixth sign of Al-Qalbu Salim is your relationship with Salah. I love it. I miss it. I enjoy it. And it is the coolness of my eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it this way for all of us. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Jazakumullah khair. I'm really grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, and to you. Really a good crowd, mashallah. This is, no really, I mean it. This is not a top, an easy topic. This is a topic you probably, most of you have not heard it before. Let alone come and practice it. And, and this is why, alhamdulillah, when we're preparing for this, I loved the, the topics and the choices because you want to hear something not the same. We need to change. And one of the verses in the Quran that I really recommend to all of you, read it and read it and read it and read it with your heart. It's a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it to us believers. It's in Surah Al-Hadid, the iron. And the verses start by the following. أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Hasn't time come yet for the believers, for their hearts to surrender to Allah? وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ And what have been sent to them from the truth, meaning the Qur'an. It's a question mark. In the Qur'an, some or one of the themes of the Qur'an, and you will find it repeatedly, there is questions in the Qur'an with no answer. It's called rhetoric questions. Allah, throw the question, and where is the answer? One of them, which some of you also may be familiar with, Allah said, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافِنَ abda? Isn't Allah enough for the servant? Yes or no? But there is no answer. If you read, this is in Surah Al-Zumar, their groups. Allah says, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافِنَ abda? Isn't Allah enough for the people? And immediately he, he continue, وَيُخَوِّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِ And they make you afraid of those who are less than Allah. What is the answer? Why I'm sharing this with you. When you see a question in the Quran, you all know Surah Al-Rahman? Alhamdulillah. Let me give you an example from this. This will be even easier on you. What is the repeated verse in Surah Al-Rahman? Alhamdulillah. It's a question. Which of the favors of your Lord you deny? Right? Where is the answer? Have you thought of this? Where is the answer? Where is it? I want to hear it. No, there's no answer. You know why? Because the answer is clear. This one of the sunnah, when you hear this, you say, we do not deny any of them, Ya Allah. So here, back to the Qalbu Salim, and back to the time when we are going to change. That's what the verse in Surah Al-Hadid, when Allah says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Hasn't time come yet for the believers to change? For their hearts to surrender to Allah? Yes or no? Is it time, had, had time arrived? Is it the time to change or not yet? I need more time. Answer me. Of course, time started long time ago. And I keep doing what? Pushing it. Procrastinated. When, I'm, when I become 40. When I get married. When I have children. When the children finish school. When they go to college. And non-ending deadlines. And should be. And when the Sahaba, this verse was sent to the Sahaba. Companion. And when they heard it, immediately said, Yes, Ya Allah, time has arrived. 
This is what I want from all of you. And make dua that Allah made me do what I am telling you before anybody else. You say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn the dialogue. Learn to talk to him. Ya Allah, from today, the journey will be different. From today. You brought me to this conference. You made her speak this way. That means you want me to change. Help me. I want to be the qalb of Sayyidina Ibrahim. But it's not easy. And a lot of distractions. And number one problem is me. Honestly, number one problem is not the people, is me. And he will help you. Don't give up on yourself. As I said, from the beginning, during, and at the end. So number seven. And at number seven, that your heart is sound, done, or it's in the process. You started the journey. The thing that you worry about day and night is related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَكُونُ هَمَّهُ wahida. The worry, the concern, what takes my energy, what focus is what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his forgiveness and his mercy and loving mercy. And I do things to please him. One of the also most beautiful verses of the Quran that I have seen it used in reality. There's a verse in Surah Taha where Sayyidina, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to Sayyidina Musa in Taha. And Allah is asking him. And of course Allah knows the answer. He said, وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى Why, why are you rushing, running, and you left your people? The answer comes later and says, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى I ran to you, Ya Allah, so you are pleased with me. I ran to you, Ya Allah, so you are pleased with me. How many of us, don't show me hands, again, between you and Allah, you say, I am running, I'm competing, so Allah is pleased with me. We compete for dunya, all of us. Alhamdulillah. I want my children to be as good as my sister's children, if not better. I want the house. I want, if in halal, alhamdulillah. But what about the akhirah? You know what I say to myself? Why in dunya, and this is for everybody, why in dunya I want to be in the best, I want to live in the best house. I want to be in the best neighborhood. I want my children to go to the best, to best school. Is that wrong? No. Why not? As long as the means are halal. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to be and live in the best neighborhood. My neighbors, at least, you know, will be less headache for me. Children go to the best school, so I'm not worried about their education, what they are learning. And I want this and I want the best. So I come and ask myself this question. Why not in the best seat in Jannah then? Why don't I want to be in the best room in Jannah? Next to me, my neighbor is Rasul And the next neighbor is Sahaba. And the guest who is going to come and visit me is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we say, let me just get to Jannah? Doesn't matter. Why? Raise the bar. Raise the bar of the Akhirah like you raise the bar of dunya. Nothing wrong with that. What is the most famous dua that you all know? Rabbana atina wa fil akhirati wa qina. Rabbana, ya Allah, give us in this dunya hasana. Wa fil akhirah, hereafter, hasana. It's the same word. What does that teach you? I can have everything good in this life. And I can have everything good in the Akhirah. Really? Yes? Why the yes is no? Yes or no? 
So what is the problem then? I tricked you. What is the problem? Huh? You all know the dua, right? What does the dua mean? What does it mean, Ya Allah, give me in this dunya good, hasana, and in the akhirah good? So if that's the case, so what is the problem? How do they define hasana in dunya? Simple, easy, anything that Allah gives you that will bring you closer to him, then that's your dua. Give me children, they will take me to Jannah. Give me spouse, she or he will take me to Jannah. Give me the best job, the best degree, the best home, the, it will take me to Jannah. So I want you to know this. Having dunya doesn't mean I don't have akhirah. But having dunya only and focus dunya only and I want everything in here, it will affect there. So hammahu, your worry is I want children. You know, I say this to my patients and sometimes they really look at me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give every couple children. Ya Rabbi, ameen. But I do see patients with infertility. I'm, I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. So especially if I see her alone and I say, why do you want to have children? She looks at me and I was like, what is this question? Because I wanted to change the focus. And I said, really? Why do you want to have children? What is the commonest question? If I ask you this, why do you want to have children? What is the commonest answer? Bismillah. I only hear murmurs. So nobody wants to have children now. Why do you want to have children? Number one. So they take care of me when I get older. Right? Yes? Good luck. I don't know about Malaysia. I can't say anything about Malaysia. I don't know the culture. But I tell you, in the West, it's changing. Even with Muslims. What is the other reason you want to have children? Huh? So? Oh, so they will pray for me when I die. I can't comment. <laughs> ya Rabbi, Ameen. That's how I will say. But don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because there's three options when I die. You know that. Right? Ida Mat ibn Adam, when the son of Adam dies, right? In qata amalu, his deeds will be severed except three. One is sadaqatun jariya, continuous charity. Second is ilmun yintafa'u bih, a knowledge that is beneficial. And third is, he didn't say a child. What did he say? Righteous child that will pray. May Allah give you all righteous children. But I will ask a question. Everybody has a righteous child. Alhamdulillah. How often you make, you all are righteous, mashallah, tabarakallah. May Allah even make you better. How often you make dua for your grandmother? Grandmother, not your mother. How about your great-grandmother? What's her name? What am I telling you? 50 years from now, believe me, nobody will remember us. You like it or you don't like it, it's reality. You go to a graveyard, right? And if you go, I don't know if you, if you visit the graveyards here, but if you go, I always do this. And I just don't go only to the grave where I want to go. I start walking. And I see all these names. And I keep reminding myself, one day my name will be there. And you look at people, you know, born in, 19, in 1900. And then they died in 1940. Who remembers them now? So when you want to have children, so they will pray for you, there's nothing wrong with that. 
And Ya Rabbi, Ameen. But don't depend on this because again, 50 and 60, they are very righteous. Bi'idhnillah. But then as time pass by, we don't remember them. We don't, I don't remember my grandmother that often. Alhamdulillah, I still remember my parents. Alhamdulillah. Work on the other two. Make sure you have a, a continuous charity in your name. The easiest one is well of water. Khalas. Whoever is going to drink from it, that's your continuous charity. And the second one, يعلمون ينتفعوا به. Write a book. Sponsor a book. Sponsor a child or um, a student of knowledge. There's a lot of opportunities to do good. Okay? So back to the قلب السنين. Your focus, your focus should be everything. This is why we came to the children. Everything that Allah gives me will take me to Jannah. That's the focus. So when Allah gives you a good home, alhamdulillah, finally, you worked hard, the money is halal, there's nothing wrong with it. How am I going to make this house, this house, that, uh, that's my dream, and Allah gave it to me. How am I going to make this dream my path to Jannah? How am I going to make this PhD that I really wanted, worked for it for years, my path to Jannah? How am I going to make this OBGYN that it took me at least 12 years, 16 years to get to the degree and training and everything? How am I going to make this 16 years hasana that will give me hasana in the akhirah? That's the question. If you focus on akhirah, again, hammahu wahid, your focus is, is Allah happy with me? How am I going to take what I have to make it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number one, again, I'm going to remind everybody, make sure it's halal. The way you are achieving things is halal. There is no obedience to Allah by the end through disobedience. And the verse I shared with you about Sayyidina Musa, do it quickly. The obedience of Allah, run to it. Firru ila Allah. Run to Allah, don't delay it. Don't delay it. Somebody asked me yesterday, I really want to do my hijab. I said, tonight you do it. Not tomorrow, because you could, you could die. Tonight to do right now. Hasn't time come? The answer is yes. From today, whatever I said in the last two and a half hours that hit your heart, that you said, she's talking to me. Again, I don't know, but I'm just assuming. And this is exactly what I needed to hear. Do it today. Quickly. We have no idea how long we will live. Nobody has received a letter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, don't worry, you're dying in the 2035, you have another 12 years, do whatever you want. We don't. None. The only reality True reality of this life is what? Everything in this life is a possibility. True or false? Except one thing. Death. Yaqeen. That's why Allah called it Yaqeen in the Quran. Certainty. Wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen. Allah said this at the last verse of Surah Al-Hijr. Worship your Lord till you face Yaqeen. Certainty, it's actually death. 